Welcome to Close Listening. I'm Zach Morgenstern, joined as always by silent co-host Ludwig von B. And today I am returning to my project of trying to listen through all the Bob Dylan albums. I had a New Year's resolution the previous year to listen to all the Stones and Beatles albums, and I, I thought it would be fun to listen to the Dylan albums. Now, translating that personal project into a, a YouTube video series like I did with the Beatles hasn't always felt like the most rewarding thing, both because, you know, if you really wanted to analyze all of Dylan's lyrics, you might have to do a ton of research and make videos that are absurdly long and boring. And on top of that, even though I felt like I've tried to keep them fairly concise, the algorithm hasn't picked up on them. So my video on Highway 61 Revisited, last I checked, it had like five views. So it's really hard to predict when one of these videos will take off when they're of interest to people. You know, randomly one video will get hundreds and another one on what I think is a very classic album will get ignored. That said, today we're talking about Blonde on Blonde and at least a candidate for the best. I, I know that with, with an artist like Bob Dylan, that's a tough decision, but this one has a lot of good material on it. And it starts with an interesting track called Rainy Day Woman, number 12 and 35. So this song lyrically is basically a pun on getting stoned in the druggy sense of the word and getting stoned in the, you know, biblical execution sense of the word. And it sounds like no other Dylan songs or few other songs. Uh, you could say it doesn't really sound like a good song at all, all because it has this big brass bound of horns and they're playing in a way that's trying to sound more cacophonous than necessarily beautiful. One of Dylan's biographers said with this song, it was a reference to the Salvation Army. But so far, you know, we've heard a limited array of songs from Dylan, either sort of profound or, excuse me, we've heard either profound or sarcastically profound poetry. Uh, we've heard protest songs and occasionally on an album like Free Willing Bob Dylan, we'll hear a goofy song that's kind of posing as one of those two things. But this song is like nothing Dylan has ever shown before. It's a novelty song. You know, it's not necessarily the kind of thing people would enjoy on its own, but it's a dynamic opener to this Blonde on Blonde record. Track number two is called Pledging My Time. This one feels more like the Dylan we've known on past albums with references to hobos and the blues. But what maybe sets this one apart from the previous album, Highway 61 Revisited, which was very much road blues kind of poetry, is that there's a bit of, you know, actual romantic love in this one, pledging to you. And we're certainly going to see a lot of romantic themes on this album. Track number three is an ambitious one. It's called Visions of Joanna. So the first thing you notice is that even though this song is called Visions of Joanna, if you were to just hear the lyrics and not know the title, you might think it was named for a different woman. The one, the name that Dylan keeps emphasizing in his signature nasally vocal is Louise. We also see grandiose language in these lyrics. Uh, it makes reference to salvation, though clearly in a belittling way, but not entirely belittling. You know, Dylan sounds like, you know, every time he's mocking something, he's also mocking himself. He's saying, why am I so shallow? Maybe I would like to engage with these things on a more serious later. Track number four is called One of Us Must Know, bracket, sooner or later. This one starts with very simple lyrics, like Dylan is blurting out excuses. I, I didn't mean to treat you so bad. You shouldn't take it so personal. I, I didn't mean to make you sad. But despite what are very simple lyrics by Bob Dylan's standards, it is one of the most beautiful pieces of music we've seen so far with a chorus absolutely exploding with emotion. So on the one hand, uh, the cadence of Dylan does make a lot of his songs sound similar, but you can tell with this record pretty early on, he's moving more in the direction of beauty and focusing less on dry wit or semi-serious commentary for its own sake. And we get more of this sort of blatant, simple love in track five with, you know, perhaps the simplest, but one of the catchiest Dylan courses of all. I want you, I want you, I want you so bad. Now in the verses, Dylan seems to be talking about the opinions of important people and the kind of dark incidents that happen in the world. But are we supposed to dig into that too much? Not necessarily, because it all comes back to that simple chorus of, wanting someone so bad. It's like he's saying, I have all these things I want about, but at the end of the day, I have a one track mind. I'm zeroed in on love. Track number six is one of my favorite Bob Dylan songs. It's called Stuck Inside of Mobile. And you know, wh why do I like this one? I think it's largely just the instrumentation and there's that yearning chorus, 
But I feel like this song has a unique profundity in that it, more than any of the others, is sort of making fun of the excessiveness of Bob Dylan's lyrical style. So in the ninth and final verse, after a million vague and frantic images, Dylan sings, and here I sit so patiently waiting to find out what price you have to pay to get out of going through all these things twice. So this is the song that mocks Bob Dylan, but it's not painful to get there. The verses are well paced. He gives you time to enjoy his kind of opaque images rather than just throwing them at you. It's a wonderful song. Track number seven is called Leopard Skin Pillbox Hat. This was a stylish hat with leopard spots on it. So after on the previous track, uh, Dylan made fun of his own excesses. Uh, this time he's applying his, his critique to the excesses of others. And this time, I guess, the world of high fashion. This song is also a juxtaposition of aesthetics in a way. So the music is straight up classic blues. So it sort of mixes the pretentious high society rich culture with the kind of music where you just play the same simple chords with a guitar and a harmonica. Track number eight, another classic, Just Like a Woman, uh, and one of the real standouts for having a beautiful melody. You know, again, I complained on High Boy 61 how basically the deal in cadence defined how all the songs sounded, where this one, even though we might be using some Dylan-esque lyrics, it's clear the, the melody was entirely a separate creation of the substance of the lyrics, and the melody is outright beautiful in its own right. Now, this is a song where, you know, especially in, in the modern age, if you look at it too closely, you begin to wonder whether a title like Just Like a Woman is sexist and whether that should make you uncomfortable. I feel like it's important, though, not to make this critique on the most superficial level, because if you look at the lyrics, he's not saying women are like this and men are like this, or for the most part, he's saying just like a woman versus just like a little girl, as in the person he's singing about can be strong in all these ways, but she's she's immature in others. That said, one could certainly argue that with the character traits he attributes even to adult women, there is, there is some sexism in there. Uh, but nonetheless, Bob Dylan manages to be self-critical in, in The Bridge, where he talks about how this person who he's seemingly been belittling up to now he acknowledges that he's always owed a lot to her, you know, when he was hungry and it was her world. So it's maybe as if the song is saying, yes, I might have these simple kind of outdated views of women when I'm lustful, but at the end of the day, I, I, I'm a man of the 1960s. I believe in gender equality and I've seen in my own life some, some very strong women. And the idea of this being a woman he particularly looks up to when he once had romantic feelings for has led many to think this song is about Joan Baez. Track number nine, Most Likely Go Your Way and I'll Go Mine. Another great catchy one. Lyric-wise, it's a song about a breakup, but it kind of masks that with the detached character of Dylan's vocal delivery. I'm gonna let you pass, you know, as a simple and not very nice meaning but it feels like a line only Dylan could say, like there's something more profound to breaking up with someone. My only sort of critique of this one is it's appealing in a very similar way to track four, One of Us Must Know Sooner or, or Later. And they're, and they're different enough that I feel like over the years I've sort of blurred them together in my mind, like they're the same song. Track number 10 is called Temporary Like Achilles. This is another song dealing with love. And this, this time it's more, uh, more of an anxiety for love rather than a willingness to throw love away. This one, I don't know. I don't love it as a song, but there are certainly some good lyrics in there as they're going to be in most Bob Dylan songs. I watch upon your scorpion who crawls across your circus floor. Just what do you think you have to guard? Track number 11 is called Absolutely Sweet Marie. A similar the theme again to what we saw in Temporary, like Achilles, though this one feels like it has a bit more specificity because rather than a general pining for someone's romantic affection, it's about trying to understand a particular person, in this case, Marie. This one is most famous for the line, to live outside of the law, you must be honest. Uh, and it's it's a weird line, but it, you know, it makes sense, you know, if you're going to take risks in some ways, you have to be very careful in others. It also has an absolutely killer harmonica solo. Track number 12 is called Fourth Time Around. With this track, we move on from accounts of romantic hopelessness to an account of romantic incompetence with one person pissed off and the other person, the singer, trying to downplay the tension with banal little gestures like offering a piece of gum. Apparently, there's good reason to think the song was written as a parody of the Beatles song Norwegian Wood, though that's not the kind of thing I would hear just by listening to it. If you look at the lyrics, it has a, a sort of similar cadence, 
though, because it's Bob Dylan, it's far wordier than what's a fairly, you know, short worded Beatles song. Track number 13 is called Obviously Five Believers. This one is a plea for love in a bluesy fashion. Dylan throws his whole personality on the table, whether it's his being a black dog, which is apparently English slang for having depression, or as a guy with a lot of eccentric friends. 15 jugglers, 15 jugglers, five believers, five believers. So I guess this song is saying, yeah, I'm the king of the bohemians. I guess that makes me kind of weird. Can you love me anyway? And finally, we move on to a song that I feel like is both kind of lesser known, but also gets described as Bob Dylan's masterpiece, and that is Sad-Eyed Lady of the Lowlands. It's a long and beautiful tribute to then Dylan's new wife, Sarah. And if one just looks at it on the page, it's another Bob Dylan song that just goes through opaque description after opaque description. But when you hear this one sung, once again, the, the unique vision of the Blonde on Blonde project really comes through, that this was a record that strived to not just be about Bob Dylan writing his absurd poems, but, you know, creating music that sounded truly beautiful. This song doesn't sound like many other Bob Dylan songs, and he's clearly singing it from a different place of sincerity. So overall, Blonde on Blonde is a very strong record. It certainly goes on a bit long, and, you know, I might throw away some of the bluesy ones. I wouldn't throw away Leopard Skin Pills Bo Pillbox Hat, because I think that's a great, funny use of the blues. But other ones, Pledging My Time, Temporary Like Achilles, Fourth Time Around, Obviously Five Believers. Those ones I feel like I might get rid of. Uh, this was originally a double album, so sold on two different records. And oftentimes when I listen to double albums, whether it's Tusk by Fleetwood Mac or the White Album by the Beatles, I think, okay, this could be good if they cut out some of the extra stuff. Uh, in the case of this one, I think what happened is Sad-Eyed Lady of the Lowlands is such a long song. It's 11 minutes, 19 seconds long. So that kind of forced Bob Dylan into making a double album. So he might have been aware that some of this material was more filler, but there's certainly more than one album worth of good material here, and that maybe forced him to throw in some of the less interesting stuff. But that's the worst you can say about it. It's less interesting. Uh, and, you know, outside of that, the, the rest of the songs on here, from the quirkiness of Rainy Day Woman, to the mysterious lyrics of Vision of Joanna, to the string of, like, outright catchy cool tunes, One of Us Must Know, I Want You Stuck Inside a Mobile, and later most likely you go your way and I'll go mine absolute classic. I would never say listen to just one Bob Dylan record, but if you were going to go with this one, it certainly wouldn't hurt. I'm Zach Morgenstern. This is Ludwig Von B. See you next time. Mm -hmm.